Coaches, Arno Naka here. Wanted to welcome you to our official 2016 Top Coach Academy. Really excited to have all of you on here. Uh, these are Top Coach Academies that we do for you, for your teams, for your coaches, where we talk about leadership topics that are important to you and things, and give you things from our top coaches across the central region uh, that you can directly apply to your business. So today we are absolutely, absolutely honored to have one of the top coaches in our network, uh, former cab member, superstar diamond, four-time elite coach, Miss Trina Gray. Trina, let's check, make sure that you're on. Are you on? I'm here. Okay. Well, welcome to the call. We're excited to kick off this call, um, you know, this year with, with you. And we're going to be talking about a topic that lots of people have been, um, you know, bringing to the forefront, which is building a business based, based on a solid foundation. I know that you've done that. You've got a ton of your leaders that are on here. We just came back from our coach advisory board meeting. One of your leaders was actually on there, Vito Lafada, yeah. and uh, you've developed a ton of a ton of just great, great leaders. So before we get started, I do want to do some recognition, um, and then we'll just jump right in, Trina. Is that all right? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Excellent. So we've got we've got uh, we just received the elite report. So I thought it'd be fun to recognize our top 25 coaches in the central region. OK, so I'm going to go through it quickly. Uh, if you know them, give them a shout, congratulate them, give them a pat on the on the shoulders. So here we go. Uh, top 25 in the region, starting with number number 10 uh, company wide. Number one in the region, Anita Myron. Congratulations, Anita. Number 11, Nikki Whiting. Number 27, Megan Wisinski. Number 32, Jessica Pasola. Number 34, Janelle Summers. Number 37, Lauren Fitzgerald. Congratulations, Lauren. Number 53, Aaron Young, who's on the call. Congrats, Aaron. Number 53, also Heather Marco. Uh, number 60, Allie Bloom. Congrats, Allie. Number 60, tied for 60, Jennifer Smith. 60 as well, Teresa Schroeder. Number 60, Rachel Baldwin. Uh, number 70, Sarah Gobb. Number 70, Wendy Spencer. Uh, then Misty Nana at number 70. Number 83, Jen Delvaux. Congrats, Jen. Number 83, Liz Bellini. Number 83, Deborah Basca. Uh, we've got a tie at number 83, Ashley Audenweller. Congratulations. Uh, Val Bozzo, Sarah Bolin, Ali Dar, all number all number uh, 83, uh, and then Katrina Buning at number 83. Uh, the last two rounding out the top 25 in the region is Bree Holland, at number 103, and Jennifer Guthrie at a number at number 103. So congratulations, you guys! Well done, well done. So uh, we're excited. Obviously, this is where we've got one one month down in the elite. Uh, you know, th this is this is the number one recognition that you want to go for as a new coach, as an existing coach. And obviously, you've got someone that is leading by example, Miss Trina Gray. So, Trina, why don't you jump in? Just kind of tell us how this Beach Buddy journey started for you. Okay, cool. Thanks, Arnold. I did make some slides today to keep myself on point and on task. I got a lot of content, and I have five minutes to tell you my story and twenty five minutes to offer my training. So, I'm gonna go fast. I'd love for you to have a notebook out, a pen if you have it, and I'm gonna just fly. Here's what you can expect from me today. I'm gonna show you some of my success, but more fun, I'm gonna show you some of the struggle. I'm going to um, have you finish that section thinking, why not me? If this girl with all this stuff going on can make this happen, why not me? Then I'm gonna move into um, a quick overview of a training that we created on Team Rockstar Fit last year called the TLC. I don't have time to explain the whole thing, but I'll at least drop some ideas for you um, to consider implementing on your team. And then I'm going to share nine of my favorite lessons that came out of that training. So that's a lot of content to cover in exactly 30 minutes, and I'm going to get it done for you. All right, so just so you know where I'm going. And yes, we're taking questions at the end. I did see that we have time for questions at the end, so then I get to take even fewer breaths between now and then. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. And... Rock some slides up for you. Okay, Arnold, can you just give me a thumbs up that you can see them? Great. All right, so building a rock solid business, Top Coach Academy. Um, Arnold gave my overview, four-time elite coach, superstar diamond. Um, that's me. My favorite saying there is dream big 
and you got to love the grind. If you're on my team, you know that that's one of my favorite sayings. You have to have vision for your life, but you have to want to be in the trenches every day in this business. So who am I? I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I love living in this small town in Northern Michigan. The picture on the bottom right is my son and I, and I put this one in there because it really represents my why. So although a lot of coaches get in the business and say that we just want to help other people, you know, you can help other people by dropping off hand-me-downs at St. Vincent's, okay? There's a lot of way to help other people. So you have to want to do more than that in this business. You can help other people, but where are you going? Where are you going? So for me, personally, where I was going was to create more experiences for my family than I thought would be possible if I didn't have this kind of financial freedom and time freedom. So many of you know, I live in a really small town, as do some of my coaches who are on the line today. The household income in my community is less than $30,000 combined household income. The school where my kids went to elementary school, 80% of the school was on free or reduced lunch. So knowing that this is where I'm raising my family, because my husband has a great job here as a shipwreck archaeologist and I own health clubs here, this is where we are. But I didn't want my kids to be limited in opportunity and experience by where we lived, by our zip code. So way back then, I realized my why was creating experience and life and travel and just opening my kids' eyes to what the world was. And so, yes, I was willing to help other people get fit, improve their nutrition, and open their own businesses to get there. But I do believe you have to have something personal, a personal reason. So the picture on the bottom right is my son and I. We live on three acres on Lake Huron. Every day is a playground at my house. Every day to me and what I want in my life, every day is feeling like I live at a resort. Do I really live at a resort? No. Would you think my house is a resort? No. To me, beauty in the eye of the beholder, right? I wake up every day to a sunrise over the lake. This is what I envisioned for my life. So you have to get deeper than just I'm in it to help other people or I don't want to focus on the money. My, my goal was not to focus on the money. My goal was to focus on creating a lifestyle that I wanted. The best thing you have going for you as a coach when you're recruiting other people is showing the lifestyle that you are creating or that you're going for. You might not be there yet, but do you clearly see where you're taking your family and your life? That is what will inspire people to follow you. That will inspire the discount coach to become a builder. That will inspire the challenger to become a coach. They need to see where you are going. So I've always talked about wanting to have this, you know, live on the lake and travel and have freedom with my family. So that's a big part of who I am. Team Rockstar Fit, here they are. They came to Alpina this summer, had a huge experience. As Arnold said, I, um, these are some of the um, accolades. It's fun to show the accolades and then the failures. So, whoa, there I am on stage getting the CEO award. I thought it was going to vomit. I don't remember what I said. My knees were shaking. It was a crazy experience. There I am next to my elite star. I had a coach ask me once if I was driven by recognition. I think it's an odd question. Here's my answer. What that star represents to me isn't my name on the star, isn't my recognition, although I'm proud of it. That name on the floor represents hundreds of people I helped that year. So recognition isn't all about walking across the stage or thinking you're fancy or thinking you're better than other people. That's not what it's about, and that's not what Beachbody thinks it's about. Recognition is about how many people, how many lives were changed because of that star you earned. I think that you should be pretty proud of that. So for the top 25 people who are just named on here, I know you know it's not about you, and I know it was cool to have your name called, but you know that that re represents it. You kicked some tail feather in January. You helped some people. So be proud of that recognition, but rep recognize what it represents. It represents lives changed. Okay, so wow, those are some cool accolades. Did I start that way? No. Have I always been into fitness? No. Here, I was into food. Croissants, actually. I lived in France for a year. I, uh, at the age of 20, in this picture, at the age of 20, I couldn't run one mile without stopping. I had really given up on my health and fitness in college and uh, gained 22 pounds in my freshman year first semester. That takes work to gain 22 pounds in a semester. So I, my story goes way back then, that fitness changed my life from the inside out. Um, I got back from this trip to France after being there a year, got into group fitness, started to run, and became this more confident person. That's a fake smile. 
That girl was not comfortable in her skin. That girl didn't want a boyfriend. That girl didn't want to wear anything other than big coats and big jackets, right? So fitness way back then changed my life. So do I have a beach body fitness transformation? Not necessarily, but that's okay. I, have, I know that fitness made me who I am, made me a stronger, confident person. That's what matters. Sure, I use Beachbody programs and products to keep up my journey, but it doesn't mean that you had to have your success from those products in order to be a legit coach. You just truly have to believe that health and fitness can or has changed your own life. Why did I say yes to this business? I had a thousand reasons to say no. Right before my coach, Janelle um, Summers, invited me to coach, I had a rare monovirus usually found in women in Africa. They sent my blood samples to the Mayo Clinic. I was so depleted in energy, in resources, in nutrition, in life. I was an over, overworked, way overtired new mom with a huge health club on my shoulders. So when Janelle asked me, I had a thousand reasons to say no, right? I absolutely had no time. I had no sleep. I had tons of pressure. I had, I was struggling in life. I said yes, because I trusted the person who asked me and she made it sound kind of fun. That was it. No fancy scripts, no fancy this, that, or the other thing. It was, I trusted the person who asked me. She made it sound like it was for me and it would be fun. It was, hey, Trina, I know you're into fitness, even though you're really busy right now. I think you might want to look at this. It sounds like it's going to be a great opportunity. I'm in. Do you want to get in? That was probably the extent of our 30 second conversation. I trusted her. I liked her. Of course, she believed in me. She made it sound like it was going to be fun. So you can overcome a thousand objections with your own authentic excitement about this business and letting the person know that you think it's for them. All right. Have I, so where does my success come from? Well, way back then, my first summit that I went to, some of you know, some of you might not. I flew home on a one-way ticket for my first summit. So that girl you saw standing on stage getting the CEO award, well, five years earlier, I flew home on a one-way ticket. I felt like a fish out of water. I went to the super Saturday or to the super workout. It, um, it was at, outside the Staples Center and I made myself feel like a fish out of water. I, on, to be honest, and I love this company, I felt like it was odd. These people were clamoring. How close could they get to the stage to see Sean T and Tony Horton and Shaleen? And I just felt like it was groupy-ish. And I got in a cab, I got my bag, I went to the airport, paid $650 and flew home, one-way ticket. Not exactly a stellar start, would you say? It was my fault. If you feel like you're not fitting in or your coaches feel like they're not fitting in, they need to decide that they want to fit in. I looked for reasons that I was different from other people. I looked for reasons why I didn't fit the vibe of Beachbody. I chose not to fit in. I had to make the decision to come out of the closet. By the way, don't Google in the closet. You will find creepy, creepy pictures of guys with like knives. All right. I'm, I'm like torn here. So anyway, I found a pretty picture of shoes for this one. I had to come out of the closet. I don't know if any of you have ever hidden in the closet of Beachbody. You don't really want people to know your network marketing. You don't really want people to know what you do. Maybe you're not in great shape yet. You don't really want people to know you're a coach. Come out of the closet. Nothing good happens in the closet. It's suffocating. I was suffocating my first couple years in the business because I was, I was embarrassed to say that I was in network marketing or that I was a coach. Some of you might be in fitness, some of you might not. I was a personal trainer and a group fitness instructor, and I felt like, why am I promoting other people's products? Why? I had all kinds of hangups with it. Nothing good happens in the closet. Come out of the closet and be proud of the fact that you're part of this amazing company. Be proud of the fact that network marketing allows men and women to be home with their kids and earn more money. No shame in that. It's incredible. Come out of the closet. Okay, so look at where I am today. I'm in the Millionaires Club. I've created another millionaire earner on our team, and I've helped create eight other six-figure earners on the team. I have elite coaches, premier coaches, 30 lifetime diamonds. But wait, my first five months in the business, my paycheck was a negative $3.74. Seriously, someone like returned a box of P90X bars. Would you call that starting with a bang? Would you have stuck with me? Would I have stuck with me? Not all success starts out of the gate. I was in the closet. This is not what you would envision being a superstar diamond business here. Five months in. It gets worse, my friends. Two years in. 
two years in, I'm still one foot in the business. This is around the time I went home from Summit. It's about five years ago, right? Two years into the business, I'm making a random $100 here and there, $50 here and there. And I'm not saying that this isn't you know, good money to some people, but two years in and I'm making $77 a week, I was one foot in the water. But the worst part of this slide is on the right-hand side of the slide where you see zero going into my bank account. I had not logged in to my own coach online office for six months to know that I wasn't getting paid. I had incorrectly set up my EFT. So I used this slide for multiple reasons. Two years into the business, making really not a lot of money and not even getting paid, didn't even know it because I wasn't even logging in. Would you have bet on me? Would you have thought that I could have gotten where I could be? Probably not. I use this example for you to finish this section of my story and say, why not me? This girl had mono before she joined. She was overworked, overtired. I didn't believe in network marketing. I flew home from my first summit. I was making negative money in five months. I was making piddly money and not even logging in two years into it. I changed my mind. You can change your mind. Other people can change their mind. All right, I want you to see once I dialed in, once I built a team, once I believed, once I came out of the closet, once I saw success in other people that I could relate to, specifically, I remember meeting Mindy Wender, thinking, I like this girl, I relate to this girl, she's successful, I can do this. Are you putting success stories in front of your coaches? Once I saw success that looked like me, I put two feet in and look at my paycheck going from $274 up to $1,400. Now, I know Beachbody doesn't guarantee any level of success, but I showed you a lot of failure before this, okay? I had to believe. I had to see that success was possible for me, and I had to build a team. Your success is built on a team. Moving into the next section here. So, yes, we're running challenge groups. Yes, we're changing lives with nutrition and fitness. Yes, we are helping people get off medications and lose weight. But at the end of the day, if you want to be a leader, if you want to build a real income that gives your family a future, you must build a team. You must get more comfortable and help your coaches get more comfortable talking about the business. So let me give you some of my quick tips on talking about the business. A simple way to share the business with people. This is just a little bonus lesson I thought fit this Zoom. If you want to build a rock solid business, you have to build a team. So this is my one, two, three punch to building a team. I believe there's three things that any prospective coach needs to be exposed to in order to say yes. So three steps to yes. Now think about this. I'm going to give you a couple examples, but you need to think about this in the structure of what I'm handing you and not necessarily that every coach is going to walk the same exact path. This is the structure. I believe anyone who's going to say yes needs to have some exposure to some Beachbody program or product. Not everybody's been through 90 days of hammer and chisel. Maybe they have. For me, a lot of times, it's inviting people to try five days of Shakeology, saying, hey, this is a part of what I use and a part of what I endorse as an online coach. Would you want to try out five days of Shakeology and see if it works for you like it works for me? They need some experience with it. One of my most recent coaches I signed up, I knew she um, taught insanity classes. So her experience with Beachbody was just insanity. That was enough for me. It was a Beachbody program that she liked. So check off number one. All right, so give people some experience to a program or product, but don't dwell there. Move on to number two. So once I have someone who's had some experience or exposure, experience or exposure to a Beachbody product, I move on to number two. Here's some quick, simple, fun ways for you to show people your team. You can add them to your team page and let them audit it for two days. You can just say, hey, I think you might um, enjoy being a part of this really fun, fit tribe of cool women who I work with or cool guys that I work with, cool professionals, stay-at-home moms, whomever you have. Do you want to just jump in my team page and take a look around and see the kind of people you could work with? Nothing sells a house better than an open house, right? You want to sell your house? Have an open house. You want to sell coaching? Have an open house. Drop people in your team page. Of course, you can be more formal about this, and we get very formal about this these days. You can have a sneak peek and actually have an event on Facebook and show people your team. You can have an opportunity call, an opportunity webinar, and I believe in all those things, and I have all those things on the team, but never 
lose sight of just the simple way of inviting somebody to your team page, having them take a look around, and seeing if they think they'd fit in there. So little asterisk disclaimer here, is your team page up to snuff? Are you only offering five days left in the month? Are you at Success Club yet? Where are you in the leadership ladder? Have you invited today? Is it just a bunch of task mastering in your page or is it fun and lively and personal development and sharing your fitness results and what workout did you do today and have you read any John Maxwell today and what podcast are you listening to? Is it actually a place that you'd be proud of? Clean up your house before you have the open house. Then number three, I do believe this is a game changer and something that most of you maybe aren't doing that you could do better. If you want to have more people say yes, tell them about your coaching style and be willing to give them a reference. I added this to my business a year ago because at my health club, I require people who are applying to work with me to have a reference. So why don't I provide a reference to people who want to work with me in Beachbody? So last week, I was talking to a coach who had tried Insanity who had gotten into one of my sneak peeks, so I covered one and two. For number three, I said, what would prevent you from saying yes to this? I just needed to know kind of where she was. She said, my husband's a little worried about the investment up front, how long it would take me to earn it back. I'm like, I'm so glad you asked. Let me tell you what, what you can expect from me as a sponsor coach. You could expect that I'll be strategic. I will stick with you. I will run at your pace, but I don't want you to take my word for it. Here's the link to one of my other new coaches. Her name is Carrie. She lives in Virginia. Why don't you friend request her and ask her what it's like to work with me? That was all it took. The woman wrote me back 30 seconds later and says, I'm so impressed that you'd give me a reference. My husband said to say yes. Okay, so don't be afraid to give a reference on your team and um, have somebody endorse your coaching style. Okay, so that was a one, two, three steps to saying yes to coaching. So, where did this Zoom all come from? I had talked to Arnold about a really cool program we did on Team Rockstar Fit last December. And I just wanted to give you the very quick on it now, maybe like a two minute on it now, and then I'll show you the lessons that I got out of it. Being a diamond coach is legit. It's solid. It's a great goal to strive for. But we all know with where the company's going and um, where the business is going, you can't just sit at Diamond and wait for the money to fall. You actually have to take your business a step further and work toward being a team leader. So those of you that aren't familiar with the leadership ladder yet, I know that this is something you're going to tackle and look into in February. You need to know it. So being a team leader means that um, you know there's several different criteria to it. I wanted to help the Diamonds on my team work toward being a team leader. These are people um, who are hitting success club, who are at least diamond or above. They have four coaches who have at least one success club point, and you've got coaches in enrollment mode. They are inviting to the business or to challenge groups. Your weekly volume is um, producing 5,000 team volume points a month, meaning that you are earning a significant team cycle bonus. That's where we want to take people. So it's one thing to tell people what a team leader is. It's another thing to help people get there. So I took my dogs on a walk last November and came up with this concept of the team leader club. We called it the TLC and it was hashtag right there, game changer. There's my friend and coach Sarah Morrison holding up her team leader worksheet. And um, she was one of the coaches who absolutely rocked this challenge, um, ended up um, becoming an elite coach last year as well. So there was four things that we had our coaches do in the team leader club. Whether you want to replicate this exactly or do your own, you can ask me more questions at the end. I wanted our coaches, these are diamond level coaches working toward being a team leader. I wanted them to do these four things every single day. Now I know there's a hundred checklists out there. This is the one that spoke to me. This is what I wanted. This was what worked for me in my experience. So this is what I was passing along. Every day they had to add somebody, at least one person, most of them did more, add somebody to their network, friend request somebody on Facebook, friend request a friend of a friend, find somebody new on Instagram, basic, right? but you can't skip it. Number two, every day they had to invite someone to the business. It could be as simple as, hey, you've been crushing my last 21 day fix challenge group. Have you ever thought of doing what I do and getting your own fitness paid for? Do you know that that's actually an invite? Invites don't have to be a suit and tie in a boardroom in a presentation. An invite can be, you've been crushing this group. Have you ever thought about getting your fitness paid for? I'd love to work with you. That's an invite right? Demystify invites on your team a little bit. Make it feel easier than what it, what it, can, what it per, some people perceive it to be. 
Number three, I thought this was unique. I asked them every single day to connect with a coach in their downline, not necessarily their own. Who were they connecting with? Well, every Wednesday they did a worksheet. They identified their top volume producers and top successful producers in the downline, not just on their own team. So to do that, we had to go to full genealogy, run that report, send it to an Excel spreadsheet and do a quick sort. You're smart leaders. You can figure this out. So we just sent the full genealogy to an Excel spreadsheet, sorted it, identified the top five every week. So maybe they were their own PS, maybe they weren't. The point was that we wanted to show love to coaches in the downline who might be five levels down from you, but they're kicking it and they need some reinforcement and a pat on the back. And you can find out what's working for them. So what if it's a coach who's not even your own and they're on your strong leg? Some coaches would be like, why would I even reach out to them? Because they're doing something well. Because they might know something that your coaches don't know, right? Not everything is about are they contributing to your team cycle bonus that week. It's also about who's doing something that's working. So this was the most fun part of it for me. I had coaches in the downline just lighting up with smiles and energy every week that someone noticed them. So they had to connect every single day with someone in the downline and say, I noticed that you produced three success club points already in the first two weeks. I noticed you have a thousand volume points already in the first couple weeks of the month. What are you doing? What's working for you? Do you want to get on one of my team calls? Do you want to meet one of my new coaches? Connect with people in the downline. And number four, every single day they had to mentor somebody in their downline. Every single day they had to offer mentoring to someone in their downline, right? So these aren't things that as a leader that you can do once a week out of the month or two days a week out of the seven. You have to do this stuff every day. So our team leader club went Monday through Friday. By Saturday morning of our first week in it, it was a month long, by Saturday morning, coaches were freaking out, writing all over the page, where's the post today? Where am I posting today? And I was like, oh, I was planning to give you weekends off. Well, guess what? They didn't want weekends off. Once you light a fire in people, weekends don't matter anymore. A Monday's a Saturday. It's all the same when you own your own business. So this showed me that people were eager to learn and eager to attack this business. So here's the other fun thing I did in the team leader challenge. Every single day over the course of 30 days, I offered a leader lesson. Just, I called it a TLC tip of the day. I wrote a story out, it had a lesson with it, and then they had to respond back on these four points. Again, we did this with our entire downline of my entire team. So we had more than 100 diamonds in this group and more than 75 completed the entire thing. Scale this. Maybe it's you and you're a two star and you partner up with another two star and you guys have the four of your current diamonds and two pushing a diamond in this group. You can replicate this with six people or you can scale it to a hundred people. Keep in mind that don't compare where you are with where I am. Take these principles that I'm using and apply them to your business. Okay. This was just a ton of fun. So here are the lessons that came out of the TLC last section here. All right. Number one is, um, there is an elephant in the room and it's bigger than your to-do list. So here's my tip for you. When you're starting new coaches, so I have a few tips to finish off this presentation. There's eight total. I have one minute each and I think I'll be exactly on time, Arnold. So here's a tip I have for new coaches. If you're getting a new coach started, you can't go at them with just lessons and to-do lists. You can't go at them with the coach online office. You can't go at them with success starters or Emerald until you get over their fear. I think one of my values as a sponsor coach or one area that I shine in because there's a lot of places I struggle. The area I shine in is helping coaches overcome their fear. So on their getting started right on their first meeting with me, I will not talk about the details of the business. I will not get into running their first challenge. I will not get into the training until I find out what they're fearful of. And we absolutely dig into it and chip away at it until it's gone. Coaches, you can't cover up the elephant in the room. So I always send out 10 questions in advance to the people I'm going to get started as a coach. One of the questions is, hey, what makes you worried as a coach? Something just really easy like that. Then I start with that on our GSR. I say, hey, Megan, it's so nice to meet you. I'm so excited you're going to um, jump into this business. Um, I saw that when you answered number six about what you're worried about, you're worried about failing and you're worried about what your friends and family are going to think. If we get through nothing else today, we're just going to tackle that question. And that is my biggest tip for you for getting coaches started right. 
please, please help them overcome the fear. Tip number two for starting coaches off right, and these are all lessons, by the way, that I shared in my team leader club. So these are with diamonds and above still needing this kind of just simple reminders in their business. Okay, so I had a massive aha moment a year ago in my business, and it came in a workout. I was at my health club teaching a combat workout, and this is an actual picture from that night. It was night one of a combat boot camp I was leading. Well, what went wrong? I came into the workout like a coach does, ready to teach. I was like, you're going to have your wrist straight. When you punch, you're going to extend. You're going to look down your shoulder. Your abs are drawn in. And I realized that no one was listening to me because they were all just punching the bags. And I stopped and thought, huh, they don't want to learn it all. They just want to punch the bags. And I applied that immediately to my Beachbody business one year ago. I now let my coaches just punch the bags. So when I have a new coach starting, I immediately have them inviting to their first five-day challenge group. That's my, that's my philosophy. You do what fits you. Have them do something specific right away. Get them over their fear. Let them punch the bag. For me, letting them punch the bag is getting up a great post on their social media about becoming a coach. It is letting their friends and family know about this new venture. It is inviting people to their first five day where they're required to at least have a sampler pack. I do that. My coaches are running a five day with a sampler pack in their first two weeks of becoming a coach because I know that people just want to punch the bag. And if I help them just take quick early action, it won't build up into something so monumental where it won't build up to the fact where a person in this picture doesn't even want to hit the, the bag at this point because I've scared them so much about their wrists and their shoulders and their abs and then they're tentative. Let them go. Let them punch the bag. All right. Apply that to your business tomorrow and you will feel the difference. All right. Baby steps. So you've got coaches. Anybody see the movie? What about Bob? It's hilarious. And the book is called baby steps. And there's a segment in there where, um, he is so fearful of the world that he has to just take baby steps to get himself to the elevator. Right? So I use this in my business that baby step your coaches into action, but make them take the action. So for example, for me, if I'm requiring my coaches to run a five day challenge within two weeks of becoming a coach, I don't just tell them that and walk away. I tell them that and I baby step them to the elevator. I say, let's make a list of the 10 people you want to invite. Tell me about them. How about you write up an invitation to them and you screenshot it and send it to me? How about I'll give you some feedback on that? I'll help you through those first conversations. So I'm not saying you have to do it like I do it, but I've been in the business for seven years. I've achieved some good success. And as a coach, even now here in 2016, I am still helping my coaches take baby steps. I'm reading their conversations. I'm giving them feedback. I'm suggesting people that they can invite to their challenge. I'm helping them with their posts. Baby step your coaches to success at the beginning and they will take off running and won't need you as much in the future. All right. When in doubt, leaders, you have to fall in love with this business. To be honest and authentic and transparent with you, there have been many times over the past seven years that I have doubted myself or I have fallen out of love with being a coach. A significant point in, my, in this um, journey for me was January of 2015. So exactly a year ago, I got back from a family vacation where I'd been really relaxed, rejuvenated. I read The Entrepreneur's Roller Coaster. I was just happy. I'd had great family time. I connected with my kids and my husband. I got to sleep in. Life was so great. I got back home um, for the new year and I was just honestly depressed. I was sad. I was crying on our diamond leader Zooms. I didn't feel like I had it in me to do it all over again last year. I had this pit in my stomach that, can I do this again? Do I have what it takes to invite and mentor all over again? And I had to... I had to really reflect on that. And afterward, one of the amazing coaches on our team, Vito Lafada and his wife, Anna Renderer, reached out to me and they said, thanks for your honesty today. It's nice to know that you still struggle. You do have it in you. Take a break for a week. Get acclimated to being back home. And remember why you started this in the beginning. I had to find ways to fall in love with this business all over again a year ago. And I did hit Elite again last year. And I did hit some really great goals last year. But January didn't start that way for me. So little things that I did to fall in love with the business all over again, these two pictures represent. One is I fall in love with this business every month that we do a team Zoom. What's so exciting about a team Zoom? It might not be that for you. It is for me. We interview top leaders on our team or we interview top leaders on other teams. 
I love helping people tell their story. I get excited about it and work on it for a week. I send the person questions in advance. I read them over. We send them flowers. We promote it. We do huge team trivia after the event. Now, I'm not saying you have to do what I do. You've got to find something to fall in love with. A team Zoom could be just something, an appointment on my calendar. It's not. It's an event to me. It's an experience to me. It helps me fall in love with being a coach every single month. The other pictures right there are from Super Saturday. Wow, those are in Wisconsin, so I thought I'd use that since we're in the central region here. Going to an event, going to a Super Saturday helps me fall in love with this business all over again. This was a huge, amazing, incredible Super Saturday, and I felt so fired up about the business afterward. But guess what? The Super Saturday previous was one one hundredth of the size. There was 10 of us at, a, at my friend Sarah's house here in Alpena. 10 local coaches got together one night with some drinks and snacks and watched the video together and fell in love with the business that way too in a little round table discussion about why we love being a coach. There's so many ways to fall in love with the business. You have to continue to do it. All right, a lesson from a stadium. This one was a tough one. Um, there's a picture of my son. We are at the U of M stadium. And he got to play a hockey game there. He's 10 years old, and he got to go to this huge stadium where the Wolverines play. And he got to play a game. Well, what happened? They, they won, but they didn't play well. So he comes out of the tunnel afterward, and he says, I don't want to talk to you right now. Let's go. I'm not happy. And I sat there and thought, this is a teaching moment. What am I going to say right here? I said, no, nope, stop right here. Look around you. You were in a big house. You are in a stadium. You had an incredible experience. Whether you missed a shot, whether you missed a pass, those things are going to happen. But look at the whole experience of what you got to do today. I don't care if the coaches are mad. I don't care if they think that your legs were tired. I don't care if the game as a whole wasn't your best. Don't let tired legs or one missed shot ruin the whole experience. Coaches, this is us on a daily basis. You have the opportunity to build a stadium. Your stadium is your beach body business. You have the opportunity to be the CEO of a five figure, six figure, or seven figure business. You're gonna miss some shots. You're gonna have some bad games. You're gonna have tired legs. But don't let those individual losses ruin the overall huge experience. Build a stadium. Take a moment to look around at what you're building, and the missed shots won't matter so much. I'm taking one for the team putting in these pictures of myself right here. I thought it would make you laugh. There is no bench in this beach body business. Everyone is an athlete. I dug up pictures of me back in seventh grade at a UW Madison um, basketball camp. I was not a great athlete. Look at me. I, my legs are the size of a stick. I had no girth. I had no strength. All right. I was not a great athlete. Sometimes I rode the bench. Sometimes I didn't play a whole lot, but guess what? In this business, in this business where I'm the coach, I'm a gold medalist, and that's how I see it. Everyone in this business is an athlete. No one dictates when you play or when you sit other than you, and I loved that. I love this concept of I get in and play as often as I want. I hustle and run as often as I want. No one gets to bench me. Coaches, think about this. Whether you were an amazing athlete or you never played a sport, in this business right now, you are an athlete. You decide how many sprints you're going to run to make this happen. All right, bringing this home. I want you to see sunshine and not shag. I don't know if I just put that thing across my screen or not. I'm really sorry if there's a blue line there. I don't know what I did. See sunshine and not shag. In this business, I equate it to the cottage I, I bought on the lake. This was the cottage on the left that my husband and I bought. It was somebody, the people who lived there were 40 year smokers. They had shag carpeting. It was dark and dingy. The windows didn't open. When I went into that cottage, I did not see the shag. I saw the sunshine. I saw a place to have amazing experiences for my family. I saw past, I saw past the shag and past the smoke and past the ugly panel and yucky lamps. Do you see that in your business? Can you see sunshine right now? Can you see the team that you are building before you've built it? Think about that. Can you see this amazing team that you're going to meet up with at Summit, that you're going to go out to dinner with, whether it's four of you or 40 of you? Can you see what you are going to create before you create it? 
I learned this from Allie Brown eight years ago before I was even a beach body coach and it changed my perspective. I had to envision the life I wanted, envision the team of people I wanted to work with, envision the experiences I wanted in my life before I could have them. If you're not envisioning that for yourself, you can't go get there. You have to see what I saw at this cottage. I saw sunrises and sunsets. I saw fires with my family, roasting marshmallows way before it was there. You have to see it. All right. To bring it home, Arnold, I'm talking so fast. I think I'm on time. Um, another amazing, fun picture that you can all laugh at of, from my childhood. A lesson I want to bring you home with here is keep the surprise and ditch the sweater. What did I mean by this when I shared this in my TLC group? It meant that you have to take some of the experiences and customs from you and your, and your sponsor and your coach, keep the ones that you love, and ditch the rest and create your own. So growing up, my parents used to surprise us at the end of Christmas with one big gift. They'd pretend like Christmas was done. They'd start putting all the wrapping away. They'd start telling us to clean up, and then all of a sudden, we'd each get this one final gift, and that's me getting my first 10 speed. This was after Christmas was done. They'd surprise us with this gift. Later in the day, when we had relatives over, we had to get all fancy and dressed up. Look at my brother in a suit. I'm in this white, itchy dress. My sisters are in a sweater. So when I raised my own family, what traditions did I keep as a mom? I kept the surprise gift at the end. I loved it. I keep it for my kids. I ditched the sweater. My family and I, we go to the beach for Christmas. We have on swimsuits on Christmas day. I kept what I loved about what my parents did. I ditched what didn't fit me. Coaches, you are emerging leaders. Diamonds, star diamonds, two star diamonds. You have to keep what you love from your sponsor and your coach what got you to where you are, and then you have to start creating your own traditions for your team. You have to start being strategic. You have to start deciding where you're taking your team. Coaches, the last slide, everything big starts small. My life now isn't big and fancy. It's big in terms of purpose and impact. I feel like I am living my dream every single day, but it starts small. For me, it started with the decision that I could see success for me, and I saw it in other people. It just, it made it, it made it feel real to me when I saw other people that I could relate to become successful. It started with me and a notebook and writing down my first dreams in this business, me and a $1 bulletin board that I put up on my tiny office at my old house where I started to put my dreams up. Everything big I've created in this business started small. And I hope that you can take some ideas from the Zoom today and go blow it up and create the business and the life that you want. Miss Trina Gray. Wow. Okay. You can take a, a swig of, of water now. <laughs> lots, lots of phenomenal information. Let me, let me thank you um, for being so courageous in sharing your struggles and gracious enough also to share your successes. I think that um, as I'm looking at the comments, a lot of the people are kind of have this idea of Trina Gray, superstar diamond cap member, CEO award winner, and think that just life is perfect and everything is hunky dory all the time. Um, I think it's I think it's 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 refreshing to see that. Right. Um, let me also just point out a few things as I was taking notes here. I think that's so important. First of all, the first time that I've heard this. Um, these references, the whole point about endorsement, um, referring your coaches to someone so that they can check and find out how it's like to work with Trina Gray. I, think, I thought that was simple yet brilliant. Um, the way that you're implementing the leadership ladder, I think that it's a new concept that a lot of people are trying to wrap their arms around. And this, what you shared there, gives them a clear understanding and the plan of what to do. Um, I thought it was refreshing also to talk about confront the fears. Guys, confront the big, huge elephant in the room before your coaches move forward. I think that was, that was huge. Um, you know, and start with the end in mind, fall in love with the best. So many different things, and thanks are coming in. I do have a question, Trina. If, you know, it looks like we've got a few more, a few more minutes here. But I'm a new coach, okay? And, and so I'm a leader on this call speaking to a new coach that's extremely busy, that has multiple things that are happening in their lives, um, how do I, like, where do I start telling them that they can do this, right? You know, how do they fit it in? Do
Do you tell them about some of the sacrifices they have to do? Do you help them maybe fine tune their time management and find a few hours here and there in their week? How, what's your approach? Yeah, so you're saying if I'm helping a new coach get started and my new coach is really busy and isn't quite okay, sure, sure, then how am I going to help that person get started? Yes. Yeah, okay, awesome. So we've approached the elephant in the room already, and the most common ones there are that I don't have time, that I don't want to sell, that um, my family's going to think I'm weird, that I'm not good on social media. So I tackle all that first, right? And then what I would do is just find out from that person, I think it's really hard to start off with what's your why. I think if people aren't like used to anybody ever asking them that, so it'd feel kind of awkward for them to have to dive into that right away. But you could ask this very simple question that I ask. What would you do with an extra hundred dollars this month? This takes exactly your question, Arnold. It strips all the complication out of it. And I say, what would you do with an extra hundred dollars? And the person's like, I had a guy say to me recently, I would take a night off from waiting tables and I would take my stepdaughter to Disney mm -hmm. in Orlando. And I said, well, why don't we work on a plan to help you do that? I've had mom say I would get a guilt food pedicure. I would buy a new set of dishes. So I have to find out a small little why, a small little win for me to then say, hey, well, how about if I help you make a plan to make your first $100? It might be a couple challenge packs. I might be referring a few people to psychology and just help them tackle that first small goal and then be realistic with them and say, could you commit the same amount of time to this business as you do to your workouts? And that's kind of how I make that transition. I love that. I love, and I think that sometimes, you know, when, when the why is there, the what and the how just kind of shows up. And, but you need to help them. I think that's your point. You need to help them connect that to, to, the, to, to their why. But then show them, show them why it's worth doing it, worth the sacrifice. So Help them that. pick one small goal and take them to that one small goal first. Someone's not going to come on the line and say, I want to have a six-figure business and leave my nursing job and stay home with my kids. Like They're not really going to be gutsy or willing enough to say that. They don't even know that that's possible. But they might be willing to say, I want to go get a guilt-free pedicure, and then you just help them achieve that one. Excellent. Awesome. So there's, there's another question that came from Erin Young and she asked in leading your own, your, um, in leading our own TLC, thanks for the idea. How do you help your coaches build their belief in that they too can be leaders of this stadium? Kind of going back to your son at the U of M mm. stadium, do you equate belief with their fears? Mm, such a good question. I wish my coach and friend Sarah would unmute and tell people how she thinks I built belief in her. Maybe she wants to answer that question for me. I see her being willing to unmute right now. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. How do you like that? I mean, Trina builds belief by being real. Um, we could do a whole Zoom on my story when I first met Trina. And, um, yeah, I mean, I'm so emotional right now, Trina. I was going to send you a message, but I didn't want to distract you in questions because I feel like you have been willing to work on yourself and you're willing to share that. And you're like, I remember you making this transition to take ownership over things. Like when stuff happens in your business, it's not because they don't have enough money. It's not because they don't care about their health. It's because of something you said, or, you know, I need to communicate better. Like just watching. So for you, Aaron and everyone else as a leader, like if you're just transparent and you share, you know, what you struggle with and like, the common bumps in the road that happen in this business and that happens to you and how you chose to dealt with it or deal with it. I think that'll help your leaders realize, Hey, she does the same thing. She's just reacting to it differently. So, um, yeah, I mean, Trina made me believe I could do this because she believed in me and I watched her actually like be legit and genuine in this. And it made me respect her and think I could probably do it too. Like if you're not genuine and legit, your, your coaches probably won't think that they can do it too because there's a disconnect. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. So uh, that's awesome. So, so awesome, Sarah. I appreciate that. And I think that one key thing that she added there was that I, I do often share with coaches the struggles of the business and then how I overcome them. So then it doesn't feel like it's just a yellow brick road. So Aaron, I think showing them, um, being willing to show them some success that you're having in the business. And by the way, I don't mean showing them success by always screen sharing and showing your paychecks to your team. I don't necessarily always find that to be the most compelling way to show success. I mean to show success in um, who you're becoming, who you were and who you are. 
success in you transitioning as a person, as Sarah referenced. I think it is saying to your team, this is who I used to be. This is who I am now. By the way, coaches, heart and armor. Heart and armor. That's kind of my theme for the year. That's what I've been talking to my team about a lot. If you want to be a thriving leader, if you want to be a leader in this company and in your business, you have to have heart and be genuine for the people, but you better have armor because people are going to break your heart. They're going to tear you down. They're going to make fun of you. They're going to question you. They're going to question your integrity, have heart and armor. And that is Aaron. One thing that you can compare with your coaches. Wow. Trina Gray. Um, dynamic. I just saw a comment, dynamic building belief. Um, just, just a giver and a giver and a giver. Uh, just wanted to thank you. Um, I, j I just want to honor you and your team and the time that you're taking to, to share this. You're all heart and you've given a lot of people a lot of armor. So thank you so very much, Trina, for this time. Uh, this call will be absolutely recorded. This is Leadership Gold. And uh, if you guys will please jump on her Facebook page and just Give her thanks for the time that she's given us. I know that she'll appreciate that. Better yet, I know that if, she, if you can, by the end of this year, apply all that that she's taught you, that'll be a bigger thanks for her to see that you've actually applied that in your business and in your life. So, Trina, totally. and your, and Coach, just go on your pages. Don't, you can thank me if you want, but no worries. Go on your page and say, I just grew as a leader today. Here's where I'm going to get better. Share with your audience and your people and your team how you invested in yourself today and got better. So, Arnold, thank you so much for inviting me. I really appreciate it. I love to share, and it was a great opportunity. All right. And yeah, you're pretty awesome, too. I agree. <laughs> you heard it from Trina Gray, Superstar Diamond. Thank you so very much. Uh, this Top Coach Academy was the first one of 2016, one of many, but no better way to kick it off with Superstar Diamond, Trina Gray. Thank you, Trina. Thank you, everyone, tuning in. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.